Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the First Battle of Independence located in Jackson County, Missouri on August 11th, 1862. During the beginning of the summer of 1862, various groups of Confederate bushwhackers formed under the command of a man named William C. Quantrill, a Confederate captain who would lead the famous Quantrill's Raiders. They would lead a series of raids for years that involved murder, pillaging, and what the Union considered other nefarious crimes. The Union forces had received reports of Confederate guerrillas in the area, and for 11 days, Captain Breckinridge, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Buell, not to be confused with our famous General Don Carlos Buell, scouted the area with no success. Even with no success, Buell had a stroke of luck that he had never properly taken advantage of. Several Missouri citizens warned him on August 10th of an impending attack on his command in the town of Independence. It was well known enough that most of the citizens loyal to the Union had already left. Meanwhile, Confederate Colonel John T. Hughes, along with Captain Quantrill, arrived at Independence before dawn on the 11th. Each were in command of a column, and each took a different road into town. Catching the Union defenders sleeping, they were able to fire into the Union camp, killing many Union soldiers, before the Union soldiers could retreat under the command of Union Captain Jacob Axline. Shrugging off suggestions of surrender just outside the center of town, Axline took his command and secured a rock wall and regrouped while the Confederate irregulars raided his camp. The Confederate soldiers at Captain Axline and his men were nearby and attacked multiple times. Once again, the Confederate irregular unit was unable to defeat the seasoned Union troops. Colonel Hughes was killed at some point in time during his assaults. Eventually, the Union troops under Axline were able to get away. Back in the town center, Lieutenant Colonel Buell held the bank that was acting as a reinforced command center for several hours before having to surrender. When he surrendered the Confederate troops, he made arrangements with Hughes' replacement, Confederate Lieutenant Colonel Gideon W. Thompson, to surrender and to give his 150 men parole. It should be noted that atrocities were not only committed by Union troops during this series of battles. George Todd, a lieutenant under Quantrill, summarily executed the city marshal, James Knowles, and a Union captain, Aaron Thomas, when he took over the town jail. Estimated casualties for the Union were 344 killed, wounded, and missing, while the Confederate victor losses are unknown as they were comprised of guerrillas and irregulars and were not on the rolls of the Confederacy. Please join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.